on my target leading video, I got a question about bullet drop. I said in that video that target leading doesn't work if the target is accelerating, but bullet drop is caused by gravity and gravity is a constant and predictable acceleration, so we can still make it work. I've modified the code from the target leading video, available on GitHub, see link in the description and in the comments, to account for bullet drop. I used the Wikipedia page for projectile motion and went down to the subsection on how to figure out the angle needed to hit coordinates x, y. I then implemented this equation in the code. First off, changes to the scenes. I created a new scene to test out hitting a target with bullet drop. I stripped everything out of that scene besides the gun, target, and two different cameras. If you're wondering what scenes I'm talking about changing, you should go check out the video that I made on leading a target. That talks about the base scenes that I already had set up that I modified for this video. I modified the two different bullets, but I only implemented gravity in the character body bullet. Changes I made to the Area 3D bullet were purely made for consistency. Here's what I did. I added in a movement vector. I perhaps should have done this originally for cleanliness of my code. I changed how the bullet moves. Instead of adding the transform basis.z times speed times delta, I simply added in movement vect times delta. And then scrolling down to the bottom, you will see that movement vect is set equal to the basis z times the speed. But what's good about having the movement vect is I can also add in acceleration due to gravity each frame of the movement of the bullet. Now this code right here is for the area 3D bullet, so let's look at the character body 3D bullet. There's movement vect right there, and then I've also got a variable for gravity. The velocity calculation was changed same as before to use movement vect instead of basis z. And then the next line of code, this is where I add in gravity. So gravity is just going to affect the y component of x, y, and z, and I just do uh, add in gravity times delta for that y component. And then the only other thing I added in this bullet was that same function for setting the movement vector. We have to do that after the transform is set because it relies on the transform. So that's why I just made it a function instead of putting it in like the ready function. If you put it in the ready function, well, the transform hasn't been set where you want it to be by the gun yet. So that just doesn't work. You got to do it later on, which is why I added the function here. All right, so then if we go back to the main drop scene right here and I click on my gun, we have this uh, bullet drop export variable, and I'm gonna change it to negative 9.8. I have to put the negative in there to make it drop, otherwise it'll like ascend up into the air. Here's a view showing what the target shooting looks like when we don't compensate for the bullet drop, and you can see our sad little pink bullets falling short of the target. Changes were made to the gun scene and gun script. I added this node 3D right here, pivot beneath the gun, but between the gun and the model, and the spawn location and the muzzle flash. The pivot is the only component that is elevating to compensate for the bullet drop. The calculations that most folks are interested in are going to be in the gun script gun.gd and within that they're going to be within the function set firing angle. I've got these two new variables. I've got the export variable for the bullet drop and then I've got the elevation angle. There's probably a better way to do this. I could have done this with just local variables but I made it a, a script wide variable right here. Scrolling on down to physics process, leading of the target is very similar to how it was before. The only change is right here. Instead of just passing projectile speed, it's projectile speed times the cosine of the elevation angle. Calculus students might recognize this basically as just the horizontal component of a projectile motion problem. Now, when we're not dealing with bullet drop, elevation angle is gonna stay as zero, so cosine of zero will stay as one, so this should not affect anything, and I have tested that. All right, so beneath that in physics process, if we're dealing with bullet drop, then we're gonna deal with bullet drop. I'm gonna get to that in just a second, but otherwise, if there's no bullet drop, make sure that pivot component is not rotating, set its rotation to zero, and then just look at our target. And this is the way it was before in the previous video for how to lead your target. But now we've got this if statement dealing with bullet drop. So we're still going to look at our target, but we're going to ignore the vertical component, the Y component here. We're just going to set the Y component of this vector to be our Y component, the gun's Y component, so that we'll not be looking up or down at all. We'll just be rotating to face the target as if it were in the same plane as the gun is in. And then I have a function, set the firing angle. This sets the value of the elevation angle variable. And then I, I set the value of that pivot components rotation x to the elevation angle. Could I have just done this inside of the function? Absolutely. Why didn't I? Good question. Moving on. Let's go look at set firing angle. So this is the new function. 
One change was made to the shoot function when instantiating the bullet. We also need to set its movement vector by calling this function right here. These are just changes from the previous video. Go check out that video if you're interested. It'll be linked in the uh, comments and in the video description. So setting our firing angle right here. So it takes the target's position or where we think the target will be if we're leading our target and the target is moving. Again, if somehow this got called but bullet drop is zero, then don't elevate at all, set the elevation to zero and return. All right, otherwise, I'm gonna set up some variables. Do I need to rename the projectile speed variable V0 or V0? I do not need to do that, but I'm gonna follow along so that I'm matching this Wikipedia page right here. I use temporary variables X and Z to figure out how far away is my target if it were in the same plane as me. So I'm not dealing with the Y component. I'm just dealing with X and Z. And then I just get a distance calculation. Square the difference in the X's plus square the difference in the Z's and take the square root of that. And I'm calling this X because I'm setting up a right triangle where the horizontal component of the right triangle is X here. It's the distance from the gun to the target. Specifically, it's the distance from the bullet spawn location to the target. Now, when I pivot, I'm actually pivoting not at the same location as where the bullet is spawning. Otherwise, it would look weird because it would look like the bullet was coming out of the gun from not the angle of the barrel. This does cause some inaccuracies, and I'm just going to accept those inaccuracies because they are relatively small, because the bullet spawn location is relatively close to the gun's pivot. If we go briefly over to the 3D scene right here, we can see... Here is the bullet spawn location at the tip of the gun right there. Here is the pivot at the center of the gun, same as the gun itself right there. Because those are different, we are gonna lose a little bit of accuracy. And in fact, in the previous video, I said I didn't know why I was hitting my target a little bit high and to the right when I was shooting at a very distant target. The reason is because I am looking with the gun. I'm causing the gun to face the target, and then I am shooting from the bullet spawn location. If I instead caused the bullet spawn location to look at the target and then shot from there, I get a very precise bullseye, but I want the animation to look good, so I'm going to rotate the gun, and I'm still going to spawn from the tip from the muzzle. All right, so X is the horizontal component of a right triangle. Now, if it's zero, because we're going to divide by it later on, well then, don't, don't do that. Instead, just shoot at an elevation angle of pi over two. Because if X is zero, that means that your target is actually at the same location as you if it were in the same plane. Now, it could be above you, it could be below you, and you could still get this result. So you probably need to add some other check to either shoot vertically or straight down. I choose to just shoot vertically and then ignore this because I didn't want to bother. That wasn't the question I'm trying to answer. I also need to calculate the vertical distance, the difference between uh, the target's position and my position. So I do the subtraction right here. That's why that's the vertical component of this right triangle that I'm imagining in space. I need to get the gravity. Now that's just the negative of the bullet drop. Our gravity is going to be positive even though it is going downward. And since I put it in as negative 9.8, I negate it right here to get a positive 9.8. Could I just have gotten rid of both of those negatives? Yes, but I didn't. Because there's going to be a square root in our calculation and this uh, minus this is under the square root, we should make sure we don't get imaginary solutions. Imaginary solutions will occur when you can't hit the target, when your projectile velocity is too low. And so just I don't know, shoot at a 45 degree angle is what I have set up right here because that'll give you, I think, the most range in most situations. And uh, well, that's the best we can do. So from there, we are going to calculate two solutions because the equation from the Wikipedia page has a plus or minus in it. So here are our two solutions right here. One of them has a plus, one of them has a minus. Um, you can uncomment this to print them out in degrees if you would like. I'm going to default set the elevation angle to angle one, but if the magnitude of angle two is smaller, then I'm gonna set it to angle two. You don't necessarily have to do this. Both solutions are valid. It's sort of a question if you want a shallow shot to your target, which is what the code is set up to do currently, or if you wanna do a big arcing shot. So if you were running this code for like a mortar, you would probably want this inequality reversed. You would want that 
higher arcing shot or if you're trying to shoot over an obstacle. But I wanted the smaller angle because I'm shooting with, you know, a model that looks like a rifle, so that makes more sense. This doesn't look like the sort of gun where you're arcing your shot up and over a wall. And that's it. And that's the code. Warning. This is not a mathematically perfect implementation of target leading with bullet drop. That would require some calculus, and I couldn't find a tutorial showing me how to do it. The reason it's not perfect is because the angle that we elevate the gun affects how long it takes the bullet to reach the target, but the length of time affects how far the target has moved. But the target movement affects the angle that we need, which affects the time, which affects the angle, which affects the time, which affects the angle. But in the end, my hack works pretty damn well.